Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue the FSM design techniques. In the previous video, we studied about the one of the SM, SM, FSM design technique, which is using a single processor block to code the present state, next state and output logic. To get more details on the FSM designs, please go through my previous video. Link is given in the description. In this video, let's continue the second technique, which is using two procedural blocks. One to code the present state and the next state logic and another is to code the output logic. So let's get started. We will be using the EDA playground tool to code our design and synthesize and simulate it. So this is the Verilog SDL code for the second technique of FSM design. We will be using the same inputs and output combinations as we used in our previous video or the FSM design technique coven. We have the three inputs clock, reset and X1 and one output. We have a state registered input, a registered uh, variable which is state and we have four state defined using the parameter. So here if you see we are using first always procedural block to code the present state and the next state combined logic and then we have the second procedural block to code the output logic. So let's go through the this code. So on reset the FSM state will be S1 and once we are out of the reset depending on the present state the FSM will be moving to the next state, next states. So if the present state is S1 and if the input is 1, the next state is basically S2, else the next state will be S3. When we are in the S2 state, we are in the next clock cycle, we are basically moving to the S4 state. If we are in S3 state, then also we are moving to the S4 state. If we are in the S4 state, then on the next rising edge of the clock, we are moving to the S1. Now let's see the output procedural block. So this output is basically, if you see here, it is going to depend on the state, present state. So since the output is only going to be depending on the present state, it is a Moore machine. and here we are saying that when the state is present state is S1, the output will be 1. If the present state state is S2 or S3, the output is going to be 0. If the present state is S4, the output will be 1. So now let's synthesize this design. To synthesize the design, select the UFC synthesis tool and just enable the show diagram after run. You can save the design and Give a so if you see here, this is the UC synthesized diagram and the very important point I would like to mention here is here the output is basically coming from a max. Unlike our, pre uh, our first FSM design technique, the output here is not registered. It is a combinous, combinational output. Now let's simulate the design. I have written the weight log test bench. We will go through the test bench. So these are our three input signals. This is our output signals. Here we have the DUT instantiation. Here we have a 10 nanosecond clock generation. First, we are going to initialize the design. Then we are going to assert the reset and basically we are deasserting. Then every negative edge of the clock cycles, we are driving the input x1. After 5 nanoseconds, we are again resetting the design and we will finish the simulations after 100 nanosecond. The below code is to dump the 
signals in waveform window. So now let's select the LDAC Rivera Pro tool to simulate the design and enable the open EPWave after run and run the design. So let me rearrange the signals a little bit which will help to understand the or to analyze the waveforms properly. Okay. So if you see here as per our design the output will be high when the state is S1 or S4. So let's see if this is reflecting in the waveforms or not. So if you see here 0, 0 is basically corresponding to S1 state. So when the state is 0 our output is basically high. When the state reaches to 2, 2 means S3 state. So in S3 the output is so let's see in the so in the S3 state the output is expected to be 0. So here if you see in the S3 state the output becomes 0. In the S4 state the output will be 1 and in a 0 also the output will be 1. In S1 state the output will become 0. In S1 the in, in the in the in the S2 state basically the 1 is corresponding to the S2 state. So in S2 state the output will become 0. So this reflects our design implementation properly. So just to remember here in our previous video where we had the FSM design one technique implementation, our output was basically getting shifted by one clock cycle because of the registered output. But if we see here, the output is exactly following the state transition. So if you want to use the registered output or a non-registered output, it completely depends on your applications, how you are, how basically uh, as per your applications, you want the registered output and or non-registered outputs, both have their pawns and cons. So you have to choose either registered or non-registered output wisely, depending on your design. Thank you very much. Hope this clears some of the doubts if you have any queries please comment in the comment section and if you like the video please hit the like button also please do subscribe and enable the notifications so that you will get notified as soon as i upload the new concept thank you very much